A new report out of the US has predicted that rises in sea levels could displace three times the quantity of coastal residents as previously thought. The research used computer modelling to show that up to 300 million people could be affected by coastal flooding in the next 30 years if carbon emissions aren't cut back. Countries most at risk are China, Bangladesh, India, Vietnam, Indonesia and Thailand. For more, I'm now joined from Canberra by Dr Neralee Abram from the ANU Research School of Earth Sciences. Good afternoon to you. Thanks for having me on the show today. Firstly, is this paper alarmist and based on a worst case scenario? Uh, no, it looks at a number of scenarios. Uh, what we know is that the oceans are rising and so it's really important that we have good information about the number of people who are going to be exposed to those sea level rises in the future. And what this study does is to look at the ways that we um, map the elevation of coastlines all around the world and provide really good um, information about the elevation that people are living at um, around the world and particularly in some of these areas where we don't have good information and um, particularly South East Asia where we're seeing very large numbers of people living in areas where they will be exposed to future sea level rise. Can you explain how the authors of this study calculated the sea level forecasts? Yeah, so the, the calculations are, um, that they were looking at were based on the elevation of the, the coastline and then drawing that um, into information that other people have produced about how fast sea levels are expected to rise in the future. Um, what they did in this study was to take um, the way that we use satellites to measure um, the elevation of the coastlines um, and to look at how we process that data to get rid of some of the artefacts. So in particular where we have um, housing and um, vegetation along the coastline it's very difficult um, using um, the past methods to accurately determine the elevation of the coastal area and so then to know who is going to be exposed to future sea level rises. And so that's what this study has done. And then taking that um, new method and applying it to Australia where we already have very good data to, to check that their method was doing a good job. The study finds hundreds of millions more people than previously thought are living on land at risk from coastal flooding. What can be done to protect these cities? Yeah, so in the future, there, there is no scenario where we don't face future sea level rise. So first and foremost, um, the most important thing that we can do is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions as quickly as possible so that we slow the rate at which sea level rise is going to happen in the future and we limit how much the, the oceans are going to rise. Um, but because those oceans are going to rise, then coastal communities and countries are going to need to put into place adaptation measures. Um, and there's a whole range of measures that can be, um, be used depending on what's best for that situation. It could be building sea walls um, or it could be moving away from the coast if there is safe um, places to relocate to. And it is important to note that there are a number of cities throughout the world that are already using such adaptation methods. What, which are some of the successful ones? Uh, yes, yeah, so, so we have um, areas in the Netherlands um, where um, coastal defences are there to, to protect the land that is quite low lying from, from sea level rise uh, and, and those measures um, can be very successful um, but we can also see that if those measures fail they can be quite catastrophic and, ex and in, an example of that um, was in 2005 with Hurricane Katrina uh, where New Orleans which is a city which is protected by, by levees um, when the water um, exceeded those levees and flooded New Orleans, that water was then trapped there and made for a much worse situation in that case. Do you think that regardless of what happens with emissions, the pace of sea level rises now will mean that other communities will be forced to relocate at some point before 2050? Uh, there, we will have continued sea level rise. Um, typically we look at sea level rise numbers for, for the end of this century, which is um, an important horizon for planning for coastal infrastructure. So by the end of this century, if we're able to curb emissions, um, then we could be looking at limiting sea level rise to around about 40 centimetres um, above present day. Um, on the high end scenario, we could be looking at more than a metre of sea level rise. So those different scenarios um, have very different 
consequences for how different coastal communities will be able to adapt um, to those and whether they'll be able to put into measures to make sure that the areas where people are currently living remain habitable or if people will have to um, look at other options including um, relocation or even forced migration. Just finally, the Morrison government has today announced an extra $1 billion for clean energy projects. Are you able to offer an opinion of how significant this will be in terms of reducing Australia's carbon emissions in the longer term? Yeah, it, it's a very um, welcome announcement. Anything that we can do to reduce greenhouse gas emissions um, is going to be important in terms of giving people the best chance of adapting to changes in the future. Um, the science is very clear um, that um, if we do want to avoid the worst case scenarios of future sea level change, then we need to make very drastic and rapid um, emission reductions. Um, and at the moment, the pledges that we have in place for the Paris Agreement aren't enough to, to save us from um, some of those higher end scenarios. And so um, the, the quicker that we can put into place those actions and the more ambitious that we can make them, uh, the, the more manageable these future changes are going to be for communities around Australia and around the world. Dr. Neralee Abram, good to speak to you this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.